We're going to look at multiplying by 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, um, and also dividing by those powers of 10. We're going to do it first by do using a little trick, and it's really a trick that makes it very easy to multiply or divide by a power of 10. Once we've got used to that trick, we're going to think about why that trick would work. Um, okay, so let's start with the trick. Say we want to say 3,241 multiplied by 10. What the trick says is count the number of zeros that you've got in the 10 that you're multiplying by or the 100 that you're multiplying by, etc. So here you've just got one zero and then you just move your comma that number of places to the right. So in this case only one place to the right and you write down your answer which will be 3,241. Now, even though we're doing little tricks, let's just make sure that this trick is giving us something that sounds reasonable, right? So just think about it. Is this the sort of answer you would expect? Do you expect to get something around 32,41? Well, hopefully, if you just used your sense, you'd say, all right, this number here, 3,241, that's just a little bit bigger than 3. I know that when I say 3 times 10, I get 30. So I'm expecting an answer somewhere around 30. And yep, 32,41, that sounds about right. So it looks like our trick is working well. Let's look at the next one. We've got one, two zeros in it. And so our trick tells us that then we must move one, two spaces to the right with our decimal comma. And we get the answer, 324 comma 1. Okay, again, is this reasonable? Well, yes, we something a bit more than 3, multiplying it by 100. 3 times 100 gives me 300, so I'm expecting to be somewhere around 300, and I am getting an answer, 324 comma 1, which is around 300. So this trick is giving me reasonable answers. Let's look at 3 comma 2 times 10. 1, 0, so I just take one step to the right and this will be 32 comma and then nothing after the comma so our answer is just 32 i don't have to write comma zero or anything like that what about uh, 3 comma 2 times 100 our trick says count the number of zeros so there are two of them so i must move this comma here two steps to the right but you can see immediately that they're not two things to move it over, right? But you know that you can just put an extra zero on here because 3 comma 2 or 3 comma 2 zero, it's the same thing. So when we multiply this by 100, we're going to go one, two steps to the right, put the comma down there, and we're getting 320. And can you see the answers are all kind of making sense with what we'd expect. 3 times 100 is around 300, and we're getting here 320s looking right. Okay, I want you to do the next three quickly for yourself. Pause the video now and try it in your homework books. Okay, so this one was easy. One zero, so you move one over and you put your comma down and you get 71 comma 2. 35 times 100, well hopefully you didn't do anything too elaborate here and you knew already from you know, grade one, two, or three, that this is going to be three, five, zero, zero. But let's just say if you completely forgot, you know that 35 is just the same as 35 comma zero, zero. And so you would have moved one, two steps over and you would have got exactly what we've got here, which we know from our earlier grades, 3,500. Okay, what about 7, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2 times 1,000? This is one of those ones where I'm going to throw in an extra zero here just so that I have the things to move over. So I've got 1, 2, 3 zeros, and so I'm going to move 1, 2, 3 steps over, and I get my answer of 7, 1, 2, 0. Okay, we're going to do a similar story for division. Um, the only difference is going to be we move the comma to the left now instead of to the right. Okay, before we start doing the first one properly, we've got the question 312,59 divide by 10. 312,59 uh, is something just over 300. 
So what do we expect the answer to be? We expect the answer to be around 30. Let's see how the trick works and see if we do get what we expect. Okay, so the trick says we've got one zero, we're dividing, so in this case we move one step to the left and put it down there, and we get an answer of 31,259. Okay, and that is roughly what we expected, right? It's around that 30 that we expected. Okay, what about this one? We've got one, two, three zeros. So we're going to move this comma three over to the left. Now you'll see there are not enough numbers for the to the left for me to move three over. But I hopefully you can agree with me. I can put as many zeros to the left as I want, right? Zero, 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 one is just one, right? So fine if I put the zeros in and that'll help me move it. I go one, two, three to the left. And it's going to be there, the comma, so I'm going to have 0, comma, 0, 4, 2, 1, 3 as my answer here. So our trick gives us a very easy way to multiply or divide by powers of 10. You count the number of zeros in the 10, the 100, the 1000 or whatever. And if it's multiply, you move the comma that many steps to the right. If it's divide, you move the comma that many steps to the left. As easy as that. Okay, so we've learned the trick now and we can use it, right? If we multiply, we move to the right. If we divide, we move to the left. But let's just think about why this trick works. Because we don't like to use tricks without some understanding, right, of what is going on in that trick. And the main reason this works and it only works when we're multiplying or dividing by 10 or 100 or 1,000, you know, the powers of 10, is because our number system is based on 10. The place that you are, the place values, are all related to 10. And let's have a look at how it works. If you start at the units, to get to 10s, it's multiplying by 10. To get from tens to hundreds, it's multiplying by 10 again. To get from hundreds to thousands, it's multiplying by 10 again. Similarly, to get from thousands to hundredths, that's also multiplying by 10. And from hundreds to tenths is multiplying by 10. So quite simply, if we started off with, let's just say, a 1 here, and we multiplied that by 10, what's it going to become? It's going to become 10. Now, can you see, this thing hasn't changed, the actual digit hasn't changed, it's just shifted over. Similarly, if we took that 1 and we multiplied it by 100, the digit wouldn't change, you'd get 100, it would just have shifted over into that place value. So, let's try with a few um, different numbers here. So, let us take... Let's stay with whole numbers. Let's say we had 23 and we multiplied it by 10. Well, if we take the 3 and we multiply it by 10, well, 3 tens are 30, so it would just be end up being a 30 over there. And 2, the, this 2 here is actually a 20. When we multiply it by 10, it's going to be 200. So what you've got is that when you've multiplied by 10, the actual digits, the 2 and the 3, haven't changed. They've just shifted over in their place value. And that's because the place value is based on tens. So if we took 23 and we divided it by 10, well, let's think about what would happen there. 23 divided by 10, if you take the 20 and you divide that by 10, it's just going to give you a 2 and the 3 units divide by 10 will give you 3 tenths. So can you see the numbers haven't changed? They've just shifted over in their place value. And the easiest way for us to shift the digits over in their place value is to move the comma to the right for multiplication or to the left for division. Hopefully that gives you a little sense of why the trick works. And so you can happily now 
feel happy to use the idea of when you're multiplying a decimal by a power of 10, you can move the comma over to the right. And if you're dividing by a power of 10, you move the comma to the left.